Picking up on our uh, previous video, we talked about the word charmed and uh, looked it up in scripture, showed up in a numerous uh, places because I was connected with the word charmed because we know that they use that in witchcraft many times. They say, even at a television series that even dealt with that and called them charmed. Uh, those that were engaged in what was considered black arts, uh, those uh, practices of the devil, uh, works of, uh, of, of evil, not works of good. Uh, Jeremiah 8, 17, Deuteronomy 18 and 11. Uh, then we have Psalms 58, verse 5, Isaiah 19 and 3. But when you're looking at these things, you'll understand that in its sense, what it's being used is not being used in something that you'd want to bring close to your heart. These are these are uh, dealing with uh, warnings, Menina, about the bad, using charms or being involved in divination. So uh, unfortunately for those that are watching that think that tarot cards and fortune telling and all those things are okay uh, and witchcraft, well, to the contrary, Christians, nor were the original nation of Israel allowed to be involved in such things. So these are these were banned practices. These were things that were completely uh, wrong and anybody who engaged in them were cursed. Uh, the uh, the word uh, the word uh, charm um, is a small ornament. Now, if you went in our previous uh, uh, research, you would realize that ornament was like an embellishment. So it's like something added to your name. The surname is like a title of embellishment. So it all relates as an ornament of ego or pride added to someone's name. It's a man's title, as Job 32 talked about, us not to accept, which transliterated out uh, not to accept a man's person or title or flattering titles led to surname. So charm is a small ornament or an embellishment or trinket worn on a watch chain, bracelet, etc. A word, verse, act or thing supposed to have magic power to help or harm people. Charm also comes from attract, allure. Charm emphasizes winning and holding a person's attention and admiration by giving delight. Now we know Eve, when she saw the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, she saw the fruit on it as very pleasing to her eyes, was very desirous. She desired it, but it wasn't something she needed because she certainly was given all the other trees of the garden to eat. But that tree, they were banned from eating. So when you're being allured into something and you admire something, and we know our court system many times has been referred to under admiralty law, which is admiring something that's not yours. Uh, we also realize too, um, that uh, we're being allured. So, placing all this together, also the fact that it meant magic power to help or harm people, and harm has arm in it, charm has arm and arm in it. You could see that these things are connected and the word itself gives you the understanding that it is not a good thing. So the surname is like a charm. And therefore, they're trying to charm you in, allure you in. And the courts of admiralty want you to admire this so that you'll say it. So it's like alluring, baiting you in. So you believe that you're getting something from it. And only evil would do such a thing. And therefore, the society that we live under, not being a Christian society, being basically dominated by pagan and immoral beliefs, where anything that is legalized is okay, allows a society to perpetrate such a thing and allure many participants in. And because broad and spacious is the road leading off into destruction and many are the ones finding it, you will find that the majority of the people you're surrounded with are on the broad road leading with the use of this charming, it appears to be customary name, tax name, uh, that you would use when you're involved with participation with them. And therefore, it identifies you as not one of the true God. And therefore, you are not separate. You are in the whole or the aggregate. Until you comprehend these meanings and you do your research and your due diligence, 
you will not find an escape. And therefore, you'll be in like this burning house asking us, how do I get out of the burning house? How do I stay in the burning house and not get burned? Well, unfortunately, until you understand you have to leave the burning house, the burning Roman house, in order not to be burned with fire as what has been designated in the book of Revelation that's coming to the unholy Roman Empire, which is a big aggregate of false belief. And it allows anybody to believe what they want. So there's many new age beliefs out there now. Teaching everything is okay. And this, oh, to believe in pure Christianity would just not be fitting in. Therefore, you'd be working contrary to the peace of society. But in reality, that's not the truth. Because their society is destined for doom because of its immoral and demoralized way of life that is now a repetition or a revolution leading back right back to what we saw in Babylon and many of these pagan cultures that eventually uh, went into demise because they had no moral content to hold them together. They had nothing from God. Uh, they were basically nations that were contrary to. And so it is now uh, our time to start choosing sides of which side we're on. But as Christians, we are peacemakers. Therefore, we are not a threat to society in the sense of doing anything that would resist them in arms or fear, uh, we'd be representing peace as the Prince of Peace, which Christ was. And therefore, uh, he's given us the greatest ambassage, which is to promote peace, not war. So we hope that this, uh, this information or this knowledge that we have provided in these videos uh, will help you to uh, understand that it is a matter of exercising the, the faith of truth uh, from God's word and then knowing how we will proceed by walking as true Christians, not as state registered, fictitious participants in something that looks like Christianity on the surface, but really is not. Thank you for listening.